What do you do when something upsetting happens? Maybe you got a bad grade on an exam, or you got some sad news from a friend, or got in a disagreement with your coworker, or maybe you're just having a crappy day. You can probably think of several different coping strategies that you might use to help yourself calm down and feel better when something upsetting happens. Maybe it's taking a few deep breaths and counting to 10, or maybe it's buying that pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream and then sitting on your couch bawling as you watch a very sad movie on Netflix. I mean, I've never done that. <laughs> Or maybe it's calling a friend or a parent and talking with them until you feel better. These types of coping strategies help you regulate or control your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Essentially, they're your way of dealing with the challenges of life, working through them and responding to them in the best ways that you can. And this ability to self-regulate is a really important skill in life. But the development of self-regulation is something that happens gradually across time and looks different at different ages. A while back, I got the opportunity to talk to Jane Ellison, an early childhood mental health specialist, about this concept of self-regulation, and she had some great insights into how self-regulation gets built. When children are really, really little, when they're first born, they really don't have much ability to regulate on their own at all. They need a primary caregiver who helps them regulate. When they're hungry, when they're upset, when they're scared, they cry and somebody comes and picks them up and pats them on the back and rocks a little and helps them feel better. And it's actually that experience of getting upset and then being calmed down over and over and over with a primary caregiver that helps build that regulatory capacity inside of them. By three to six months or something, then they actually can sometimes regulate a little bit just because they hear that someone is coming. You can hear that they're calming down just a little bit because they expect that that person is going to help them calm down or meet a need that they have. So then they move into kind of those toddler years. Now they've got some new skills. They can actually walk over to the person that they need. They can put their arms up and say, pick me up. They've had the experience that they have an attachment relationship with somebody who will help them when they need it. They have that expectation that that relationship is there for them on a regular basis. They can count on that relationship. This helps build that capacity inside of them, their internal capacity to regulate themselves and to go get help regulating when they need it. And in preschool years, they now have some new developmental skills like they can talk and they can ask to have someone take care of their needs. They can tell somebody that they're feeling mad or scared. But those preschoolers, sometimes things can happen where they're more tired than usual. They've been sick recently. A new baby's been born in the house and their abilities suddenly go back down to toddlerhood and they're having tantrums and they're not really expressing their feelings with words. This regulatory, this building our regulatory capacity happens throughout our life in one way or another and there's ups and downs and just like with every other part of development, sometimes it goes backwards instead of forwards. But again, it's continuing to have that experience of when I have needs, someone will come and meet those needs and the internal experience of dysregulation and regulation. So we talk about this as the concept of self-regulation because the eventual goal is for us to be able to regulate our emotions and our behaviors more or less on our own. But then again, maybe self-regulation isn't quite right. When we talk about self-regulation, sometimes I wish that we would change it to co-regulation. I do understand why we talk about self-regulation because it's a developmental process to become more and more regulated in that way. But because we use the term self-regulation, we often forget that it's within the context of a relationship that that regulatory capacity gets built. And so instead of thinking about how do we use relationship to help children become more regulated or grow their regulatory capacity if it's not going well, we think we can teach them a skill or train them on a technique and that then they should be able to do it themselves. So what can parents and professionals do to help build regulation, especially in children who have trouble with it? If they didn't have that experience go well early and that's why they're really dysregulated now, they don't need a technique or a, or a skill. What that child needs is the experience, the internal experience of being regulated with a partner over and over and over again. 
to build that capacity. Think of them like they're one or two, like they're a baby, like they're a toddler, and that that's what they need is that experience of somebody coming alongside. So what do you do if a child is having a tantrum? Is it giving in to provide comfort and help them calm down? I often say to teachers and parents that it's never bad to help a child calm down. So if a child has broken a rule and then is having a tantrum and falling apart, they need help calming down. And know that when you are helping them calm down, you're actually helping to build that capacity for them to regulate. In the midst of that dysregulation is not the time to teach. Can I learn something new when I'm dysregulated? No, that's not when I'm gonna learn something. That's a time when I need someone to come alongside me and help me calm down. So what's the takeaway from all of this? I hope that uh, people who work with young children and parents of young children can recognize that when children are not doing well with regulation, we can really shift our expectations, that we can approach it in a different way. The message is, I'm here to help. The message is, I'm with you, and I can help you calm down. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up down below. And if you're new here and like what you saw, consider subscribing. Big thanks to Jane Ellison for providing her expertise in this video. More information about her is available down in the description section down below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.